I hope the workshop will achieve the expected objective so that the participants will be in a better position to formulate relevant policies and handle disaster preparedness plans of their own countries more effectively in the future. At the very outset, it gives me a great feeling that this is the seventh time for me since the year 2003 to have been on the podium for the inaugural session of a scientific event that is being organized by the Center for Science and Technology of the Non-Aligned and Other Developing Countries, in short, NAM SNT Center jointly with the Sri Lankan scientific agencies. The earlier events organized by us have been on topics as diverse as science policy, small and medium enterprises, lightning protection, pesticides, herbal medicine, rainwater harvesting, and these were held in different places like Kendi, Colombo, Negombo, and other places. I am sure that the enormous success of these activities has proved our worth and has paved the way for the center's ever closer interaction with this great island country. I have been given a note by my officials. But once I came here and look at the, the banner here, International Workshop on Mitigation of Disasters Due to Severe Natural Events from Policy to Practice. So I thought, keeping behind the note and say a few words with my experience for the last 10, 15 years. The, the mitigation, mitigation is the effort to reduce loss of life and property by lessening the impact of disasters. Sri Lanka is one of the countries in the year 2004, 26th of December, experienced the natural disaster that is tsunami as a result of earthquake below the sea level 30 kilometers close to Indonesia. This happened somewhere around 6 o'clock in the morning in Indonesia, but Sri Lanka affected somewhere around 9.28 on the same day. At that time, I, I was the Minister of Power and Energy. I was told that there's a flooding in Goal, the, the, one of the major cities in southern part of Sri Lanka. So then I rushed to temple trees at the former President, His Excellency Mahindra Rajapaksha, who was the Prime Minister at that time and the President, uh, Her Excellency Chandrika Kumarthunga. She was not in the island on that particular day. So then our former president, he was listening to uh, some uh, Buddhist talk. So on a poe day, full moon poe day. So some of the ministers also rushed to that place. So then we discussed what is this. So then Prime Minister went to the operation room. At that time, we had another struggle against uh, uh, terrorists, especially in the northern and eastern part of the country. And Colombo is not like nowadays. At that time, every hundred meters you find barriers, checkpoints, and manning uh, soldiers everywhere with automatic weapons, but now you can't see that. So then uh, the Navy operation room, so we were told that there was a tsunami situation uh, in uh, close to Indonesia, 
in the Indian Ocean. So even for me, in the year 2000, for that 12 years ago, for the first time I came to know about the word tsunami. The word tsunami. So then of course, the government with the help of many voluntary organizations, forces, and with uh, the assistance from international community. So we started uh, the rescue operations and, you know, uh, relief uh, measures to uh, victims. So two-thirds of the coastal area of this tiny island affected by two, uh, 26th of December 2004 tsunami. We lost about 40,000 lives. We lost about 80,000 houses along the coastal area. And we lost about 100,000 fishing boats. So now, if you go to those parts, especially the down south, the eastern part, the northern part, so very hardly you see some remains of, you know, uh, wreckage of boats or any any building. By now we have fully recovered. So at that time it was a chaos. One uh, train carrying uh, about 1,500 passengers to Goal washed away with railway tracks. Now you can just imagine the effect of the waves. There were two waves within half an hour's difference. So still we can remember. So we are proud as a nation. Without any differences, all the communities got together. All the people got together. So then the, with the government efforts, two consecutive governments, so now we are fully recovered. And now we have tsunami warning centers. So every year there's a uh, training. One particular day we have fixed as a training if there is a tsunami situation. So this is how you have to work. So the signboards are there and one of the organizations under the Ministry of uh, Environment, uh, Geological Survey and Mines Bureau, the top floor of the GSMB, if you go there, you can see any, any small earthquake or any any natural disaster anywhere in the world. So within a few seconds, you can watch it and pass the messages to uh, relevant authorities to take uh, necessary steps. So then we have built uh, all our organizations in connection with natural disasters. And apart from that, we have a uh, climate change Secretariat under the Ministry of Environment, close to Parliament building. So if you want, you can visit there. So they have all data and in uh, uh, all the informations. So 24 hours monitoring system we have. So therefore, as a result of that disaster, so we have developed our own systems and matching with the international standards. Under this ministry, we have 13 organizations. Most of these organizations, uh, in connection with research, research in many areas. Very soon, we are going to have a symposium uh, attended by Sri Lankan scientists who are attached to various research organizations, university academics, private sector and some expatriates who are, uh, who are working in other countries. Uh, to my knowledge, we have more than 225 Sri Lankan scientists attached to NASA in the United States of America. That is one example. And apart from that, various like, I can't remember his name, Professor? Gomez. Gomez. There are so many Sri Lankans attached to various UN organizations, agencies, serving as scientists. Some of them are advisors, some of them are attached to some research work. Like that. So here in Sri Lanka, we, under my ministry, there are so many research institutions. 
one the fundamental studies uh, institute in kandy i think if you visit some of the delegates plan to visit kandy on saturday i believe sunday. with next sunday so then we can make arrangements to visit uh, nifs uh, in kandy close to kandy city uh, hantana it's a nice scenery there and that uh, nifs uh, founded by uh, our great sri lankan scientist uh, professor siril ponnamper who actually uh, one of the researchers attached to nasa at that time and uh, uh, he tested the soil uh, brought from the moon by cosmonauts he was the leading scientist in that group and dr sarad gunapal another sri lankan scientist attached to nasa uh, he will be here within this couple of days to deliver uh, the uh, keynote address to commemorate uh, great scientist arthur c clark he lived in sri lanka he was offered honorary citizenship by the government so we have a arthur c clark inst modern uh, institute for science and technology in morat so then i just want to mention you so that we have taken many steps to mitigate the uh, natural disasters uh, not only that sri lanka is one of the countries uh, has signed kyoto protocol some 15 20 years ago and when i was the minister of uh, environment uh, i was invited to japan that is uh, kumamoto where we signed the uh, minamata uh, convention so that is uh, the, the minamata convention I, i i don't want to speak at length on that particular subject but we also have the same same situation in especially the north central part of the country by using chemical fertilizer and pesticides for more than 25 years to increase the yield of the harvest by our farmers so as a result still we are testing even the who engage with the research program but still scientists they can't say exactly this is the cause but we want to mitigate that to mitigate so government has started a new program actually by his excellent the president might pal sirisen his leadership and a uh, lot of activities organized by president president secretariat together with minister of agriculture and other relevant organizations so for last three days we had a exhibition and awareness program among government officials it will continue that is to reduce chemical fertilizer and introduce organic fertilizer and the nifs scientists our scientists they have invented a liquid make out of uh, leaves and you know uh, with some uh, special plants is a liquid so you can dilute that with the water and just spray to your vegetable plot or whatever it is right so then you can reduce 50% of chemical fertilizer they have done surveys and all that we have very good results to increase the crop and at the same time protect the soil and the bacteria reaction so that is one of the inventions and our nano technology park in homag so there we have 30 scientists young sri lankan scientists engaged with various research work that is also relevant to the mitigation of uh, uh, disasters and uh, uh, under the ministry of disaster management after tsunami we created a new ministry that is disaster management 
So they are they have various organizations, they have scientists, engineers, and they also engage with you know uh, various activities to mitigate. Normally, we have two rainy seasons. So during rainy seasons, we experience earth slips, especially in uh, plantation area, where the, uh, including Kandy, the hill country. We find earth slips. As a result, we, lo we lost sometimes 200, 150 lives and houses. So now we have to take some measures. So like that, uh, we have engaged with various activities uh, locally and with the international communities. So this is ideal workshop organized by NASTEC and uh, you will deliberate for the next three days and uh, come out with uh, some results as a Minister of Environment from 2013 to 15, I have attended uh, many international conferences as a participant and as a resource person. Once I went to Berlin and then uh, New York, UN headquarters, then again Switzerland. So during uh, my uh, attendance to those uh, conferences and workshops, of course, we contributed our experience uh, that we had in Sri Lanka. So, I don't want to speak much because I have another function organized by National Science Foundation. Uh, so, we have uh, international recognized scientists in our country. So, as I said earlier, we are going to have this symposium in uh, June, first part of June and in September we are going to organize uh, international uh, symposium uh, with the participation of some Nobel laureates. We have already invited them uh, in Sri Lanka with the participation of at least uh, 500 scientists from all over the places. So uh, with that hope of course, I, I think that after three days uh, you can prepare a policy framework and uh, action plan uh, to mitigate natural disasters by reducing emissions, uh, greenhouse gases and uh, apply uh, natural uh, products as I said earlier, the fertilizer, uh, we call it uh, biofertilizer and uh, especially uh, generating power. That is one of the challenges. Now here in Sri Lanka, we have installed capacity of 3,300 megawatts. Out of that, 55% uh, thermal and coal and 45% hydro. But within next 10 years, we want to introduce more solar power, wind power, biomass. So that is how we have planned for next 20 years uh, our generation plan. So then we can mitigate natural disasters by reducing emissions and applying, you know, uh, always uh, natural resources to generate power and other resources. So last, I thank Professor Tantrigoda and his staff attached to NASTIC, uh, ministry officials and all the delegates who are attending this workshop in Sri Lanka. So within these three days, the delegates who came here for the first time will experience, as said by Professor Arun, the natural beauty of Sri Lanka and the cultures of Sri Lanka and how as a small country with the population of 21 millions we manage our natural resources to mitigate the natural disasters. Thank you very much.